The Lincoln Trail Workforce Development Board recently released its three-year strategic plan reflecting on the hard work and insight of the board and many regional stakeholders. The Workforce Development Board provides oversight of the Kentucky Career Center Lincoln Trail as well as youth services and employment and training activities funded by the Workforce Investment and Opportunity Act. The board is made up of more than 20 members who represent employers, educators, and more from the eight counties in the Lincoln Trail Workforce Development Area. Here with me is Dean Shamore, Chair of the Lincoln Trail Workforce Development Board. Well, Dean, thanks for being here with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so let's get right into the meat of it all. Dean, the board, you guys are working very hard to train and connect prospective employees with employers in the region who need qualified workers. How, how will this new strategic plan that you guys are doing help the board continue to build a thriving workforce system? Well, first of all, you, you know, we, we've had kind of a double whammy here. You know, we went through COVID, which is uh, uh, something no one dreamed about and, and uh, how it's uh, messed with the workforce. Uh, and then we've got this big announcement with Ford Motor Company coming to the area. So you can imagine uh, it's it's a lot of workforce. So, you know, collaboration is key to engage well-prepared workforce that supports our vibrant economy. The new strategic plan outlines some excellent strategies for continuing to grow relationship between businesses, the workforce, and the education field. The focus of the plan is to strengthen the existing workforce by providing career services and training to job seekers. Connecting with those who struggle with barriers to employment while also preparing our youth for successful career paths. This requires partnerships between educational institutions, employers, the Workforce Development Board, local chambers of commerce, political leaders, and community organizations. The strategic plan builds on what has worked well over the past five years while adapting to changes and focusing specifically on ways to achieve our most urgent priorities. The plan was developed by consulting firm Strategy Matters using various data sources that included interviews, focus groups, surveys, a labor market analysis, a review of past efforts, and insight gathered from the Workforce Development Board's annual Workforce Summit in August. It, you know, we hear a lot about workforce shortages in the United States. It seems like social media, TV, newspaper, whatever, That's we're hearing left and right about workforce shortages and how that affects employers. So in the Lincoln Trail region, we've got, I mean, gosh, many successful businesses and employers that continue to make significant investments here. As you mentioned, the Ford, the Ford plant, we talk Kruger packaging, you know, we, we, we can talk our friends in Meade County with, uh, with, uh, with, with, with the steel company. Uh, and that equates to more job opportunities. How does this plan address the specific needs for employees in our region? Uh, you know, and it's, you mentioned, and that's a huge investment, but it's kind of overshadowed by Ford because it's it's a mega. And so, you know, we have a lot going on. You know, first we want to engage businesses and develop a legislative agenda to enable the state to better support business needs. What businesses around the region come together to share practices, we have the opportunity to co-create solution to shared problems as we prepare for new investments in the region, such as Blue Oval SK Battery Manufacturing Campus in Glendale. We may also consider a regional branding strategy to encourage people to locate the Lincoln Trail region. A foundation of those efforts will be working with businesses, committee members, and other stakeholders to identify the most urgent parties for legislative and regular support. You know, we're, we're pretty lucky, Greg, because, uh, you know, Fort Knox, and the good thing about Fort Knox is if Fort Knox grows, it actually, you know, they bring spouses and they bring family to our area too. So, you know, that that's key too. That uh, you know, in Fort Knox is is such a, uh, you know, pose so good in the uh, in the rim of the U.S. Army, and you know, to to pick up more commands there. And if they do that, will that really helps us out a lot. But, you know, we've got we've got issues. You know, I think personally, I think the biggest issue is is child care and uh, getting childcare for people uh, so they can go to work. And, and COVID just really, again, the COVID, we come back to COVID and, uh, you know, what it did to schools, you know, you really never knew if school was going to be open, if it was going to be closed. So, you know, and you didn't want, you know, you're, you're more scared about your grandparents and that's normally who watches your kids on a, on a snow day when you have an unexpected school day. Uh, but now you don't want to send your kids to grandparents because you, you're, you're afraid of COVID and, uh, you know, you don't want to get them sick. So, uh, you know, I think I think a lot of parents were maybe reluctant to go 
back to work of child care alone you know uh, i think when things get back to uh, uh, a lot better and, and hopefully they, they will soon and, and i think personally i think things are better uh then then maybe uh, that'll work out some of those issues where we can get some of those uh, uh dual working families which you know our economy needs that now you know 50 years ago our economy survived with one person working but anymore it takes two people and mm-hmm. and i think we uh you know, need to uh, find a way to get those two people in the household back to work. And I think once we get schools back to normal, child care to normal, that, that's a big help. All right. I know there's been a lot of work done on this plan and I, I appreciate everything that's going on with this. Cause as you, as you mentioned, yeah, I mean, it's, that it's changed back in the day, you know, you had one member of your family working a full-time job, but it, it takes more than that now. And right, right. on top of that, there, I mean, everywhere you look, there are shortages of, people they they need bodies to work and uh we've got to get ourselves back to that and it's great to hear that there is a plan for this and and this is this is certainly an exciting and pivotal time in our region because i think if we uh if we put our crystal ball out here and just kind of time stamp right now what we're living in where we're living and what we are seeing on a day-to-day basis is going to be drastically changed in say seven years you're you're correct you're correct and you know also we're working to identify support and motivate members of the talent workforce to participate in employment local businesses you know kind of what we were talking about a key priority for us to ensure all prospective employees have access to affordable child care Uh, we also recognize the need to support the behavioral health and well-being of our workforce It is important that we work together as a community to reorganize and address life challenges and basic skills development as employers, we must c- convene and create new initiatives to remove obstacles such as transportation, prior f- felony convictions, and workforce development to expunge it. Benefit programs is an example of how local programs can be developed to open new doors. You know, when I was in the General Assembly, that's a huge phone call I got a lot. I mean, I would get that phone call often. I still get it even though I'm not in the General Assembly. You know, how can I get a felony expunged? You know, it's, uh, you know, we, we passed these laws in the General Assembly. And we felt like, you know, someone who, uh, was 18 years old. And I mean, you know, we all, you know, a lot of us <laughs> made mistakes and, you know, especially when you're a young adult and, and you know, if you've uh, served your time and, and back in society, you know, uh, you know, I think the majority of society wants those people uh, earning their way and get back in the workforce and, uh, you know, and, and raise a good family and, and they can't do that unless they have a good job. So once we can get them on track and, and uh, find a job that fits for them, I think the better off we are as a society. You know, third, we want to focus area of our strategic plans to develop, expand, and, and retain local talent by connecting people with the education, training, and work experience necessary to succeed. We will continue to facilitate partnerships between businesses and educational institutions to develop programming tailored to the needs of employers. The Greater Knox Coding Academy, a 17-week certificate program at ETCTC, is an excellent model. The program was developed after leaders from the Knox Regional Development Alliance approached ECTC about a need for more IT professionals. You know, I come from the IT background, I don't know if you knew that about me, but I was in the military for six years myself and got out and started an IT business in January of 1993 and still doing that today. You know, we offer uh, IT in a, in a regional area. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, our area needs more IT people. And I actually went to that coding academy to check it out. And it's a good program. And they're turning some people out with some good paying jobs. You know, that's a great program. And, and I love that. Again, that's that's great information to hear. And, you know, I always I like to equate it to like speed bumps. You know, everybody, it seems they have speed bumps in life. And some people are better at navigating those speed bumps than others. But if you remove those speed bumps, it makes the path a little right. easier, but you still got to do the work and actually take the steps to make it happen. And I think, uh, everything from the coding Academy to, to the expungements, to the childcare options that are out there. I think this makes that path, uh, a little easier for those folks to take the steps to do that. So anything else you want to add today? Well, you know, it is in the future workforce plays an important role, particularly as we look at the number of new jobs coming to our region. Like we said, who, who would have ever thought about COVID? Who would have ever thought, you know, Me County was going to land a new core, followed up by Glendale, you know, uh, uh, landing a, a, a mega industry, you know, and both with high paying jobs. You know, that's a great thing. Unfortunately, uh, the, the bad side of that is, that, you know, we have a lot of other great businesses that we need as a community, you know, service oriented businesses now are going to have to be competing for these employees. So you have to make sure that, that we bring up 
a, a new class of working people uh, and in, get them entered in the workforce to, to fill those other jobs that we need. I mean, uh, you and I still want to go out and get something to eat, don't we? You know, we still need uh, people to do laundry. I learned a long time ago, I was on an aircraft carrier, and I learned a long time ago that it takes everybody to make the world go round. Because if we didn't have people on that ship cooking food, a uh, big guy like me goes hungry. I wasn't as big, but I could still, still go hungry. And, uh, you know, you got to have clean laundry. You know, everybody smelled like on a ship if uh, nobody did the laundry. You know, I worked on satellite communication. I made the exact same money as the person did, did the laundry. And it's because the laundry was important, you know, so it was was cooking food. So, you know, we have to, uh, that is, you know, we're, we're worried. We're not only interested in getting people uh, to make a, a great living at Ford and Nucor, but we're interested in, in getting people to make a good living uh, at these uh, uh, service industry, which you and I need. Plus, uh, these small businesses, they need employees. Mm -hmm. Small businesses are, are uh, you know, these people who want out and, and start these businesses, they need to they need to fill these positions. And, and we need to support that. We can't forget about them. All right. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of movement in our community, and it is great. And, and just to think about, uh, my brain hurts just thinking about the new core square footage of their facility, the square footage of uh, the Blue Oval plant. And even Kruger packaging, I, I spent some time uh, over there the other day, and just the the size of that facility. Those are just those are three new facilities in our community. It, it it's massive to see what's going on here. Well, well, Dean, thank you so much for taking time with us today and 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 getting us updated. And it, it's always great to talk to you. Yeah, you as well. And thanks for everything. I know this is the only thing you do for our community, and thanks for what you do. And I hope you have a blessed holiday season. If you would like to get involved in local workforce development efforts, the website again is ltcareercenter.org backslash task force. I'm Greg Milby, community storyteller, and this is the Work Matters segment for Kentucky's Heartland.